Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about connecting 2D flow areas to a 1D reach via lateral structure. All right, what I have on the screen here is the HECRAS 2D user's manual. It says connecting 2D flow areas to 1D hydraulic elements. And the first half of this page will be involved with what I'm talking about in this lesson, which is connecting via a lateral structure. If I expand this window out to the right a little further, on the left, there is a window of a menu that appears. So where we're at is within the development of a 2D or combined 1D, 2D model. I'm on the third link down, connecting 2D flow areas to hydraulic elements. All right, I'm going to leave a link to this page in the description of the video if you'd like to read all the details. Also, I am going to leave a link to my lesson nine, which is about lateral structures and introduction, as well as lesson 42, which involves levee breaches, which is uh, involves lateral structures as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What I have on the screen here is my heck RAS. I have got a base geometry file that's been created, and that's what I'm seeing here in this RAS mapper, along with some of the elements such as the river, cross-section, 2D flow areas, as well as a terrain layer. And I also have a 2D flow area. So we have a river, it's flowing downstream. We have our cross-sections, and then over here is a 2D flow area, which I'm gonna consider is the city. And I have a levee that's between the two in the form of a lateral structure, which you're not seeing in this view, but I will bring up in the uh, geometric data editor in just a moment. So if you're curious about how to get your model up to this state right here, just watch some of the previous videos on uh, 2D and uh, RAS Mapper. All right, so let's go ahead and head over to our geometric data editor. I'm going to click on edit and then geometric data. Here is the model and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. The river is flowing in this westward direction. I've got the river, the cross sections, and then the 2D flow area right here. And I already have a lateral structure that's sketched in right here. So this is at River Station 6200, and then it goes down another couple hundred feet. So what I'm going to do is create a second lateral structure and demonstrate how this one was built, as well as uh, add in a few more features that I didn't add to the first one. All right, so I'm going to click on lateral structure right here. Now what it's highlighting is the one and only lateral structure that I already have. I'm going to create a second lateral structure further upstream. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, just move the screen over a little bit. Let me go ahead and check the stationing here. So this is River Station 7001 and it goes down to 6304. Okay, so maybe if I put it like at 6900 and it was a couple hundred feet long, that'd be good. All right, so let's go back to lateral structure, options, add new lateral structure. I'll say the upstream end is 6900. Okay, next what I want to do is click on right over bank or sorry, next to right over bank. And then for the tailwater condition, this is where I specify the 2D flow area. So I'm going to click on storage area, 2D flow area, and then set the storage area, 2D flow area. The name of this 2D flow area is called perimeter one. That's the default name. So that's just what it is. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Next, what I need to do is specify the actual dimensions of that lateral structure. So I'm going to click on weir embankment. And then the weir width, I'll just go ahead and say it's 30 feet or so. For station data, I'm just going to say it starts at station zero and it goes 200 feet. And then the elevation is, say, 35 feet. We'll see what that looks like. The weir coefficient is two right here. I'm just going to leave that as it is. Broad crested weir is fine. And then the distance downstream from the next upstream cross section, 7001 down 101 will put me at that river station 6900. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK and then go ahead and close that. So now here is our lateral structure. It shows up. This is the one we started with, and this is the second one that we just added. And you can see just like the first lateral structure, it's connected to the 2D flow area. So that looks all good. Now, as far as using some of these two dimensional tools, one thing that uh, we can do is modify this location of the lateral structure. So we could do that by just if I go lateral structure, weir embankment, I could change this number to something further downstream, something like 301, click OK, and then close that, and then it moved that way. But say, for instance, I wanted to move it closer to the 2D flow area or closer to the river, then I could do that by, first of all, holding down the control key. Say I wanted to put it like right here, so it's closer 
it's further upstream and it's closer to the 2D flow area. What I'm going to do is hold down the control key. I get the little measure icon for my cursor. I'm going to do a single left click. I'm, I'm holding down the control key still. I'm moving the mouse cursor further downstream. Now I'm going to let go of the control key and then boom, this little measure details pops up on the screen here. So I have the length, the area, the DX, D, the DY, the slope. What I'm interested in here is the different points. So I only had two points and I'm going to go ahead and copy these to my clipboard. There's actually a button that allows me to do that. Copy coordinates to clipboard. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Then I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up the lateral structure editor once again, and then make sure I've got my uh, upstream lateral structure selected. That's the one I want. Next, I'm going to click on this center line GIS coordinates. So when I click on that, it gives me the ability to select the lateral structure that I want and then paste in those coordinates. So I'm going to highlight both columns, X and Y, Control V. The values are now pasted in. I could have typed them out and then pasted them separately, but they were already on my clipboard. So that looks good. I think all I have to do now is click OK and then boom, look at that. It repositioned to that location that I dragged in. This could be helpful if, for instance, I have some aerial photo or something in the background that I want to sketch out so that I could get a more accurate location on my lateral structure. These same coordinates can be edited. If I go up to um, the geometric data editor, I click on GIS tools, and then this third option down here is lateral structure centerline table. So here is that same data. I can edit again. And then here is the data for the first lateral structure, which I did not enter this sort of data for. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually delete it now. And if I do that, the positioning of that lateral structure will default back to its original data that's saved in the lateral structure editor. So I'll click OK, and then boom, it's back to its original location. All right, now it's time to talk about the headwater and tailwater uh, connections for the lateral structure. So let me move that right there. We have the headwater is represented by the river, and then the tailwater is represented by the 2D flow area. So when it comes to the lateral structure, Positive flow is represented by the, the flow in the river and going out through away from the river, the main reach into the 2D flow area. I'm going to click on the lateral structure editor. Next, I'm going to click on the weir and embankment. And then what I want to do is click on headwater connections. So this represents the connection to the river. I'll click on that. Now I have two different options here. The default is already selected. That's compute default weir stationing. And then the other option here is user defined weir stationing. So what it's doing is it's automatically determining the downstream distance from the next upstream cross section, that's 7001, and then the distance that's upstream from the next downstream cross section, which is apparently 6304. If I wanted to modify those numbers, I can go ahead and type in my own cross sections here, and then the weir station values here would be the distance uh, with respect to the that specified cross section. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at default for now. Also, if I specify the GIS centerline coordinates, I can no longer uh, edit, edit this table right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again real quick just to show you what that looks like. I'm going to click OK right here, close this, and then hold down uh, Control. And then here, I'll, I'll put it over here this time. Copy the coordinates to clipboard. OK. Open up the lateral structure. OK. And then click on centerline GIS coordinates. This is, yeah, 6900 and then paste these values in, click OK. OK, now click on Weir and Embankment. And if I click on Headwater Connections, I have this note here that basically says I'm not supposed, I'm not allowed to go with the user-defined Weir stationing. And that's also true with the Tailwater Connection, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. If I click on Tailwater Connection, I have the same uh, message that blocks me from entering the data because the lateral structure has been geo-referenced, has a geo-referenced centerline. All right, so I'm going to take that out so I can actually make some edits. Click OK there, centerline GIS coordinates, and then gone. OK, so about that tailwater connection, I'll click on Weir Embankment, click on Tailwater Connections. Again, we have the default, which is the computed default Weir stationing, as well as user-defined Weir stationing. What you're seeing here in this table is 252, 251, and 238. These are the numbers of the face points. So I believe this is 252, 251, and 238 must be right here. This one's 237, it looks like. The small red text is a little bit hard to see, but you know if I can see it, you could probably see it as well. 
These numbers tell HEC-RAS where the outflow from this lateral structure ties into the 2D flow area. So let me move this out of the way. And oops, I can't. Okay, so just remember 252, 251, and 238, because I have to close some of these windows so I can zoom in. All right, so here we are. We have 253, not related, 252, 251, 238, 237. The three base point numbers that we saw in that table were 252, 251, and 238. And the default is always going to have one point with a negative value that's slightly upstream. That's the 252 face point number in this case. And then we're going to have certain values downstream from that. So 251 and 238. The number associated with 251 would be this distance. And then the number associated with 238 would be uh, this distance, I believe. Okay, let's go ahead and make some manual edits. So for instance, maybe I don't want it to go all the way down to 238. I just want it to be connecting to cell 213 here which has face points 251 and 252. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'll go lateral structure, weird embankment, tail water connections. And now what I'm gonna do is click on user defined. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy these same three face point values. So 252, I'll just keep it simple and put a zero and a zero. And then I'll just delete that 238 face point number. I don't need that anymore. And then I'll click okay and then okay. And then, yes, yeah, so the image has updated. I think I have to close this as well. And now you can see that the lateral structure connects just to this cell 213. It doesn't connect to cell 212 or 214 anymore because it's bound by these two face points, 252 and 251. This black line here, this identifies the 2D faces connected to the lateral structure. And then the there's also a red dashed line apparently. <laughs> I need to change the symbology for me to see it a little bit better, but the red dash line is the exact connection location to the lateral structure. And this is typically a little bit shorter than the black bold line on the two ends. So for instance, if the downstream connection was from the middle of cell 213 to the middle of cell 212, then the black bold line would extend for both of the cells, but the red dashed line would only be uh, from the center of the two cells along the perimeter of the 2D flow area. All right, the last thing that the user manual mentions in this section is the weir coefficient. So if I go back to lateral structure, there's this coefficient, weir coefficient C sub D value right here. And if I open up the user's manual and then scroll down to about halfway down on this page, it's a table 3-1 lateral weir coefficients. It gives a range uh, for different types of coefficients and typical values. So for instance, 1.5 to 2.6 is uh, a typical value for this particular type of levy roadway. 1.0 to 2.0 is also levy roadway. That's uh, if it's only elevated one to three feet, whereas the first one was three feet or higher. 0.5 to 1, 0.2 to 0.5 for a couple other different types of lateral weirs. All right, well, that is it for this lesson. What we talked about in HECRAS was how to connect a 1D reach to a 2D flow area via a lateral structure.